This is 7 National News and in our top story. Housing subsidies worth 430.5 million dirhams have been approved for 690 Emirati applicants by Sheikh Zayed Housing Program. According to a local report, the decision came at the Board of Directors meeting earlier this week, which was presided over by Dr. Abdullah Naimi, the Minister of Infrastructure Development. Applicants will receive a response from the program via text message, allowing them to head to any branch to complete their applications. Waiting time for processing has been produced from two months to less than five minutes, in line with the National Agenda 2021, one aim of which is to more quickly provide adequate homes for beneficiaries. Housing subsidies were divided into 584 loans and 106 grants to be used for a new construction project, the completion of construction or extension works, maintenance, government housing and subsidies to buy a house. Subsidies are available to families as well as those with special needs who can benefit from housing designed to cater to their needs. Additionally, the program provides subsidies to widows, divorcees, and senior citizens. The program also set a cap of 800,000 dirhams for subsidies, calculated based on the family's average income. The UAE Consulate General in Barcelona is providing 62 tons of food to 5,000 Muslim families in Spain during the holy month of Ramadan. The Iftar project is funded by UAE charities and will benefit families in the Catalonia region in the northeastern area of the country. The food will be distributed at mosques and Islamic centers in the region's four cities. The project is largest in the region and supported by the Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Foundation, Emirates Red Crescent, Human Appeal International, Dubai Charity Association and Sharjah Charity International. The Road and Transport Authority has announced that taxi companies are required to place 90% of their fleet in operation during peak hours in Ramadan. Dur according to local reports, this comes in response to complaints for re from residents about taxis not stopping or refusal to take passengers to short distances during peak times. A statement from the RTA said iftar time is considered as peak hours for taxis and hence RTA always changes the peak hour times in Ramadan for all taxi franchise companies where they are required to have 90% of their fleet operation from 3.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. The RTA also advises all commuters for advance booking through the smart taxi app or by calling 04-208-0808 and computers can also submit their complaints at 800-9090. TCOM Group has announced that the residential and commercial neighborhood known as TCOM will now be called Barsha Heights. According to a local daily, the community's neighborhood across Sheikh Zayed Road also gets its own new name in the form of Sufuh Gardens, which TCOM Group describes as one of Dubai's best-kept secrets. While further details on the change in the identity is awaited, an official confirmed that the Sufuh Gardens district would extend from the area called Site C, which was previously an extension of TCOM, to Site B, which earlier had no name. The new identities have been introduced coinciding with the recent formation of TCOM Community Management, which serves as an independent entity created to manage and maintain and enhance all of TCOM Group's community across Dubai. Inspections done by the Abu Dhabi Education Council has uh, revealed that, that nearly half of the private schools in the Emirate have improved their rankings. The authority had inspected 42 schools from January to March this year, with around 10 improving their ranking from satisfactory to high-performing schools. Eight of the inspected schools moved from in need of significant improvement to the satisfactory level. Two of the schools, Al Ain American and Al Sunrise English, audited in the second round of inspections this year, have made the dramatic leap from being in need of significant improvement to high performing. The top rated schools ranked as outstanding included Al Raha International School Abu Dhabi, Al Muna Primary, and Al Batin Secondary, as well as Al Mushrif Primary. As per the rules, 
ADEC can impose a number of penalties ranging from freezing tuition to restricting enrollment of new students on schools that fail to demonstrate progress. Poorly performing schools are also subject to more inspections throughout the year. Outstanding students and teachers across many of Sharjah's schools were awarded at the 6th Annual Sharjah Environment Award and 3rd Inter-School Recycling Competition Ceremony, valuing their efforts in protecting the environment while also raising awareness about using recyclable materials. At an awards ceremony held in Sharjah on Sunday to celebrate the achievements of students in energy con conservation, representatives of BIA highlighted that their aim is to educate and motivate students from nursery level to grade 12 into becoming a greener generation. And they are confident that these awards will help inspire these children in creating a sustainable environment in the future. Adding that more than 250 different schools and nurseries have already participated in the Sharjah Environment Awards and over 40 schools have been awarded for their outstanding efforts in the initiative so far, officials stress that students need to be taught about the significance of waste reduction. While they are still young and recycling has to play an integral part of future school projects. While receiving her award in the Outstanding Individual Achievement category, a student of Delhi Private School in Sharjah stated that while there have been many debates about energy conservation around the world, very little has been done until now to actually walk the talk in terms of reducing waste and conserving energy globally. All participating schools were judged in a range of creative environmental projects based on three R's reduce, Re reuse and recycle while also saving the environment's natural resources. All around the world people are talking about this cause but there are very few who are actually adopting it and working towards it. So you need to work towards it and it's not a huge thing even in your day-to-day -day lifestyles. Very small, minute changes you need to bring. You must always ask yourself three questions. Is it necessary? Is there an eco-sustainable eco alternative? And is there something better I can do for the environment? And is, if it's necessary, then only go ahead because there's always something on the other that you might do that might benefit or harm the environment. So always might as well benefit the environment. I always say what I stand for is what I stand on. So we stand on our planet Earth, on the Mother Earth, and we must stand for it. And everybody together must work towards it. People have asked us why we decided to make an air cooler when there were so many other options that we could have chosen. But considering that we live in the UAE, the Middle East, one of the most hottest regions in the, uh, the world, we decided to go for something that consumes most of the energy in today's world and we held audits in our school and in our houses and we found out that about 55% of the energy goes into cooling. So we thought that why not save from this side? We could save our own resources and we could save the world's resources. So basically our project is made out of all recycled materials that includes uh, the plastic buckets that we have at home, the old plastic buckets, styrofoams, ice. I think the team, when we were making our whole project, we were sort of scared because it was a simple project, but we knew that it's efficient. So we were nervous, but we were also simultaneously confident because we were doing our bit. And when we had uh, the interviewers at our stage, they wanted us to patent the project because it was so good. And that gave us even more confidence. So today, when we were there at the ceremony, I don't think anybody was scared for losing because we knew that we had made an impact. We are now in our sixth uh, competition. This is the sixth year that we've been running uh, the Sharjah Environment Awareness Award and with each year that passes um, we see a huge increase in the amount of uh, participation from the schools in Sharjah so this is definitely a huge step for us this year we've had over 130 participants so I believe that you know as um, time goes by and you know they they get rewarded for their hard work that you know through word of mouth it's um, it's something inspiring for them and it's something rewarding for them so hopefully that yes we do feel that um, in time uh, the students will get more inspired to do more hard work and spread the environmental messages that that we um, spread to the students and finally in the news bulletin with the iconic Dubai Opera in downtown Dubai nearing completion officials have revealed a program which will host more than 200 concerts in its first year. Curating an inaugural season of variety, the program of performances includes operas, ballet, classical musicals and Arab and world music. 
acclaimed Spanish tenor Placido Domingo will perform at the opening gala on the 31st of August and Jose Carreras arrives on his final world tour to perform a life in music. Bizet's opera The Pearl Fishers serves as a cultural tribute to Emirates heritage alongside operatic productions of the Barber of Seville, a Seville and opera without words which will be performed by Italy's Fondaciones Teatro Lirico Giuseppe Verdi. Ballet fans will welcome the Russian State Ballet and the Orchestra of Serbia showcasing the romantic classic Giselle and the family-friendly Coppelia and in addition confirmed family shows include the magical Impossible which is being hailed as the most dangerous show Dubai has ever seen and the Nutcracker on Ice which combines skating with Tchaikovsky's celebrated score. Other highlights of the opening season includes Sitarist Anushka Shankar, flamenco dancer Sara Barras, and popular Emirati singer Hussein Al Jasmi. Not forgetting blockbuster musical Le Miserable, which will make its regional debut on the 10th of November and has won over 125 major awards. Dubai Opera is going to exist is the most uh, exciting and important uh, thing about it. The, the fact that there hasn't been a venue of this type or kind uh, within the UAE, within Dubai before, um, it is something that is going to fundamentally change how people look at Dubai and how people who are in Dubai, either, either living and working or visiting, how they enjoy Dubai, how they're able to, to enjoy Dubai. So it's, it's a major uh, undertaking, it's a major uh, shift in, in what the city can start to offer in addition to all the other amazing things that it has um, and we're very really very nearly ready to go i don't want to suggest that it's in any way formulaic it's not that that we've looked at percentages of types of people or ages or anything else and determined on that basis what we should have what we've done is looked at uh, what hasn't been to dubai who is in dubai and where they come from and, and what they might enjoy based on the cities that they frequent as, as travelers or the cities uh, from which they come uh, as original residents. And we've looked at those nations, we've looked at the, the venues in those places, uh, and we've tried to bring a selection, but at this stage it's really only a selection, of the best of the best fr from so many different genres, so many different types uh, and styles of entertainment. We, we've really gone out of our way to, I, I hope, try and position Dubai Opera as a place of quality, but also as a place of variety and of community, of, of uh, a place that people who live in Dubai can be justifiably proud of in the years to come. The 2000 Capacity Opera House is a Dow-shaped structure and forms part of MR's wider planned opera district. The bow of the structure will contain Dubai Opera's main stage orchestra and seating areas. The state-of-the-art design allows it to move seamlessly from an opera space to an ice rink, and the venue may also be used for exhibitions, weddings and banquets. In addition, there are future plans for educational and community programs, which will be affiliated with Dubai Opera. Tickets for a show at the prestigious venue start from 250 dirhams and go up to 9,600 dirhams for, a for a an eight-person VIP box.